Hello and welcome to the last game of the TCC Cup, the 16th edition of the Cup, where in the final Stockfish met Leela and Stockfish managed to win uh, in game 8, winning the whole thing. Let's see how Stockfish got into the final. As we can see, he won against Chess 22k in the first round, then Rough Shade in the second round, Commodore MCTS in the quarterfinal, and uh, quite convincing wins at this point. In the semi final, of course, Elishtein was more challenging 5.5 to 4.5. And in the final, Stockfish won by a single game in game eight. And in this video, let's see now how this last game went. Lila managed to get into the final by beating the Dragon Komodo. We'll get back probably with some Lila games in future videos. But now let's see how Stockfish won this uh, last game of the cup. So it was a Sicilian Scheveningen. The game started with e4, e5, knight f3, d6, d4, pawn takes, knight takes. And after knight f6 and knight c3, we have a6. And this is the knight of variation where there are many moves for white. One of them is bishop e2. And here the main move for black is uh, e5, chasing this knight back and then developing the bishops to e7 and the light square bishop to e6, follow it up with knight d7. And this is the, the main uh, idea for black. This is how black deploys his pieces in the knight dwarf. In this game, instead of e5, we have e6, and now we have a Scheveningen structure where now the light square bishop of blacks would like to be on this diagonal. The game now continued with castles. We are still in the book, uh, in this game, the book lasted for 14 moves. We have bishop e7, f4, castles. These are the main moves of the Scheveningen variation. We have king h1, queen c7, a4, knight c6, bishop e3, rook e8, and now bishop f3, preventing pretty much this bishop from getting to b7, where this bishop would actually like to be, but Developing it there would fail now because b6 loses tactically here for black already after knight takes, queen takes and e5. When both the queen and the knight are attacked and also the rook on a8 is hanging and knight d5 doesn't really help here because of knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes and uh, white picks up the rook. So b6 not a possibility. Instead we have rook b8 removing the rook from that dangerous diagonal but after queen d2 b6 still not possible now this rook is not in danger but the same tactic with knight takes queen takes and e5 still works because after knight d5 white has this very very strong f5 threatening to take here after which if the bishop recaptures then there are not enough defenders on this knight only the queen and the bishop would defend the knight while uh, stockfish would have three attackers so that's not possible and if after pawn takes the pawn recaptures well stockfish would still take this knight and after pawn takes bishop d5 would be a check and white would pick up the queen here after f5 black is pretty much forced to defend the knight with bishop b7 but now with f6 white still wins a piece because after pawn takes and pawn takes uh, the bishop can take on d5 and there are both the queen and now the bishop on f6 hanging. Best here for black would be bishop takes on c3, counterattacking the white queen, but it's not enough because after bishop takes queen, bishop takes queen, white can now win an exchange. And after black takes the bishop, white can also win two pawns. And uh, he would have a completely winning position, of course. So b6 doesn't really work. Black has to somehow develop this bishop in a different way. So black usually plays here bishop d7 with the idea of exchanging these knights on d4 and then placing this bishop on c6. But now white avoids the exchange with knight b3. But this also allows now black to play finally b6 since there are no more tricks with knight takes, queen takes and e5. And with b6 now we also reach the end of the book. And uh, b6 also comes in anticipation of white's next move, which is g4. This is Stockfish's first move out of the book. 
the idea is to play g5 when this knight doesn't have good squares so here black plays now bishop c8 not only allowing this knight to go back to d7 but also finally developing this bishop on this diagonal we have g5 knight back and now queen f2 in the other game in the reverse game lila played queen g2 and the game ended in a draw in this one we have queen f2 and they both agree that white has a slight advantage in this position we have now bishop back to f8 and now we have h4 the main move in this position played by world champions like Karpovan and so on is bishop g2 but uh, h4 the move that stockfish played uh, has also been played by Belyavsky against Kasparov once and there Kasparov continued with bishop b7 and eventually won the game here after h4 Lila continued with knight a5 trying to, to place this knight to c4 attack b2 and d3 and of course if the knight takes here then after b takes on a5 black would have um, these double pawns on the a5 but much more importantly black would uh, have now pressure on um, on b2 c3 and c2 so this would be an adequate counterplay for black against white's expansion here on the king side so of course stockfish didn't take the knight but avoided the exchange again with knight d2 also guarding the c4 square here lila now played d5 getting in her liberating d5 break which uh, gets rid of this uh, potential weakness on this semi-open fire but much more importantly fights for these light squares in the center of the board we have pawn takes pawn takes and here now stockfish can retake with either minor piece but we have rook c1 guarding c2 and preparing to take here with the knight we have bishop b7 knight takes and after queen d6 we have knight back to c3 lila now goes for the b2 pawn but this allows stockfish now to activate some of the minor pieces we have first bishop takes on b7 knight takes and now knight back to d5 and this knight is a monster here in the center of the board and uh, here and after queen takes on b2 stockfish can even activate the dark squared bishop with tempo we have queen a2 attacking here and now c4 defending the knight and uh, stockfish managed to activate these two minor pieces these are very very strong now by sacrificing the b2 pawn we have knight c5 threatening a fork here queen g2 and now rook c8 going for the c4 pawn we have h5 stockfish continues his attack knight b3 knight takes queen takes and now this pawn on c4 is hanging but stockfish evaluates that his attack is stronger and played h6 we have now rook takes on c4 and here stockfish actually got excited with his position until now they both evaluated this as a slightly better for white under half a point advantage for white but now stockfish went over uh, plus one plus 1.5 actually and he continued here with bishop takes on g7 we have rook e4 knight c3 rook back to c4 rook b1 now attacking the queen this knight is defended by the bishop we have queen a3 and now knight back to d5 and here this is already a critical position for example lila can't really afford here to to take this pawn on a4 because now with um, with rook e1 stockfish could already challenge this rook on the back rank and weaken lila's back rank by exchanging that rook for example after rook takes and rook takes ideas like bishop takes here and queen e2 threatening mate on e8 are already very very strong so lila can't really afford to to take the a pawn instead she played queen c5 guarding against this rook e1 idea because now after rook takes and rook takes she could play rook c1 pinning this rook to the king and exchanging it and black's position would be uh, fine but instead of uh, rook e1 we have first bishop takes but now after king takes stockfish's uh, enthusiasm dropped back to under half a point advantage for white and continued here now with rook d1 defending this knight we have rook e4 and now queen f3
Lila played here b5, trying to create a passed pawn. We have a takes b, a takes b. And now we reach the critical position of the game. Here Stockfish played king g2. And this is the position where Lila blundered tactically with queen c6. A move that allows Stockfish now to take over the e-file and place the black king into a mating net. Apparently, instead of queen c6, the only move to keep the balance would have been rook d4, when uh, after rook takes and rook takes, this knight would be pretty much forced to go back, because if it goes to f6, then after this exchange, the white king is in uh, just as much uh, trouble than the black king. This would be still an equal game. So after rook d4, this knight would be forced back to c3, and then Lila would have this pawn to, uh, to get some counter chances. The game would be still equal. However, after queen c6, after queen c6 now, black's position fails tactically. With his last move, king g2, Stockfish avoided those variations with rook c1, pinning one of those rooks to the king. And here now, after uh, rook e1, rook takes and rook takes, Lila still tried to exchange those rooks, but now there's no king on h1, the king moved to g2, and Stockfish just avoided the trade with rook e3. And here black's position is already beyond salvation, because um, moves like queen e4 or queen e2, threatening mate on e8, are already in the cards, and there's nothing really uh, Lila can do here, unfortunately for her. She played here b4 when uh, queen e4 or queen e2 don't work yet because of queen c2 check exchanging the queens but after king h3 now queen e4 is a real threat so we have queen c4 guarding both e4 and e2 but now we have king g3 and in this position black is in Tsukzwang. whatever lila moves here is bad for example if knight c5 then knight b6 is strong hitting this queen but also threatening mate on a8. Another move would be queen d4 maybe, still eyeing e4, but now this would allow queen e2 with mating threat here. And one idea is to play queen f1 and exchange the queens, but even after that black is in trouble because white has knight c7, threatening mate here, and uh, nothing is good here if uh, f6, to give the black king some room then stockfish can first play king g2 and uh, force this rook away from the f5 since uh, taking this pawn runs in this fork and after the rook moves away g6 creates a, a pass pawn on h7 and uh, white wins instead of uh, f6 after knight c7 uh, lila could also play knight g8 but really uh, after knight d5, knight f6 threatens mate in two, so nothing really saves uh, Lila here already in this position. Here she tried rook a1, but now Stockfish has another blow. Knight c7, when the rook can't return to guard the back rank, the knight and the queen are defending a8. And if the queen takes this knight, as in the game, then queen e4, and really mate is threatened on e8. Nothing to do here if the queen drops back to defend the back rank, then queen h7, threatening mate now on a8 is strong. Instead, Lila tried knight e5, but of course, this is already gone. Here now, Stockfish has the chance to win a pawn, and then he exchanges the queens and then takes this knight with check. And even though this ending looks hard to win, maybe for white, it actually isn't. This is a winning endgame. And especially if you have access to table bases as they have, then it's easy as pie. Here black has to make a decision which way to go with the king. If the king goes to d7 away from the pawns, then king g4 and this king goes in and picks up all these pawns. Instead Lila went to f8 with the king, but now came rook b5, threatening check on b8 and then picking up the pawn on h7, so we have rook a8 guarding the back rank, f5 now, king g8, and after rook b7 and rook c8, we have king f4, and now Stockfish's king wants to go to f6 and win maybe the f7 pawn, so we have rook e8 cutting the king, not allowing it to advance, 
but after rook a7, Lila is again in Tsuktuang. Stockfish is also good with this uh, Tsuktuang thing. And there are no moves. If the king goes to a jake, then of course Lila drops the f7 pawn for free. If the king goes to f8, then this allows g6. And uh, Stockfish would create a passed h7 pawn. And of course, after this, white queens and wins. If the rook moves away from the back rank, then after rook a8, there will be a rook exchange and white wins the king and pawn end game. And if the rook moves away instead to b8, then now the king advances and lateral checks don't really help because after rook b6 check and king e7, there are no more checks and the mate on a8 is threatened, so the rook has to go back. And now after rook d7, Stockfish would uh, threaten to exchange the rooks and then the king and pawn end game is winning again. For example, rook c8, check, rook takes, king takes. And here, whatever black moves is bad. If f6, then king e7 quite simply wins. One of these pawns uh, will queen on f8 and, and white wins. For example, f takes on g5, f6 and mating two will follow. And if instead of f6, Lila would try king f8 and after king d7 f6, well, now g6 is the only winning move for white, but is winning. After pawn takes and pawn takes again, it looks like maybe black's f pawn escapes into a queen, but it's not really the case because black doesn't have time here after king e6 and f4. By pushing either pawn, white wins. The simplest looking is g6 here when after king g8 and king f6 white would threaten king g6 and then mate with a7 and if the king goes here then after king f7 of course white mates in two or three but even a faster win for white would be here to push the h7 pawn and even though after king g7 it looks like black has everything under control and his pawn is queening well stockfish could uh, queen harry and force the king into the corner after which the king goes to f7 and again we'll have mate in two. So we can see that uh, nothing really works here for Lila. Neither rook moves or king moves are good. She tried rook f8 but now the king is going forward. We have f6, king e6 and if the pawn takes here then rook g7 check and f6 and again the pawn is going in and there are no stalemate tricks with the rook because the pawn can move forward and uh, white wins. So instead of f takes on g5, we have rook e8 check, and now rook e7. Exchanging the rooks again doesn't help. One of these pawns uh, will become a queen. So we have rook a8, but now king takes on f6, and shortly after a couple of more moves, uh, we have a check. And here now we have the rook taking on h7, rook a6, and after king g5, and rook takes on g6. The game was finally ended in Stockfish's favor. And Stockfish wins not only the game, but also the cup. Stockfish wins both the league and the cup, deservedly. Very good performance here by, by Stockfish. And Lila has to work a bit on her tactics and come back stronger next year. In the end, I would like to thank to all these guys for their support. René, Adolf, Mark, Gary, Guilherme, Sebastian, Todor and Radu. Thanks for your support. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other games on the right. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.